My name is Kirk Johnstone and you're watching On The Trial. Today, we're doing a little rendering job. It's supposed to be quite straightforward, but things get interesting quite quickly. So, this is our next little job. We're gonna take this bed off and repair it. Look, this is what the customer's been struggling with. Look at these cracks, letting water inside. Great. Look, there's another one here. Now, the customer has struggled with these for years, trying to fill them, but they just keep opening up and letting water inside his house. So we're gonna take all this off, insulate it, cement board it, and replace it with a render with mesh so it doesn't crack again for him. Well, that was the plan, but we're about to have a little surprise. So this might be coming off easier than we thought. Watch the window saw some. Yeah, let's set the top bit off first, eh? Oh, that's brickwork. Oh, that's brickwork inside. So this is just supposed to be a stud frame. Last thing I was expecting to find was bricks. This is the situation. All this timber is just complete. Well, you, it's it's gone. There was a timber frame built, and you can see here there's another stud coming up here. These were literally sections of frame. And then they've bricked in the middle so they can render straight onto it. And the water's been getting in. It's obviously been a problem because you can see that they've, they've had to put plastic on the plasterboard on the inside at some point because moisture's been getting in there. This, all this weight is all sat on rotten timber on top of a window frame. So I think the best thing to do, well, this has to come out. It's all gonna have to go. We have to build a new frame and rather than fill it with brickwork, we're going to fill it with insulation and cement board it and then we're going to re-render the top of it. It's a little bit more extensive now because we've got to build a new frame, but such is life. So in the past, every one of these bays that I've ever done has had rock wall insulation in there. I've never seen one filled with brick before. No wonder his bedroom was freezing. This was basically just a single skin brick wall. So, because I'm not a joiner, it's basically took me all day to get all that old timber out without damaging the inside of the house and replace it with all this new stuff. So that's it now. We're just gonna tack this back on here. Let me spin the camera around. This is where we're up to now. This is all good and solid. Although it looks a little bit dark, it's, that's the joists of the inside of the house. So, they're okay. They also went and bought a dry zone kit and treated that little bit of black mould and we're all ready to go now so as I said I'm not a joiner but I mean there's a little bit of a gap in the joint there you know I'm trying my hardest <laughs> I'm trying my hardest that's my best effort I can do so we're going to put some insulation in this now we've got some king's pan to go in here and then we're going to cement board it uh, we might not get all that done today, so it might just be a case of putting the tarp on for tonight to keep it watertight for them for tonight. And that's it for today. Hi, right, come on. We've just finished work now, and the missus had phoned me on the way over and said that I've had a parcel delivered, and she's left it on my desk, so... This is the only good thing about being on... Well, there's a few good things about being on YouTube, but one of them is I get little presents all the time. Oh. Oh. Like Christmas. <laughs> ah, I know what this is. Right. TDI tuning. So, so. <laughs> These guys emailed me and said. They're going to send this out to me and it's going to make me van more fuel efficient and more powerful. I mean, I am interested to see if it makes it more fuel efficient. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if 
I must press that if I want to go faster. <laughs> right. Ah, here we are. The instructions are under here. Okay. Okay, I'm going to learn how to do this. I'm going to think tomorrow morning we'll stick it on the van and see what happens. Right, let's get this fitted on here. Okay, so it was fairly easy to fit. It took me about 20 minutes. I'll tell you what, the van was noticeably faster. But I'm intrigued to see how fuel efficient it is. Okay, so now we've rebuilt a bay. Things you get roped into. We've rebuilt the bay, we've insulated it all. And to make sure, one thing that I hate is little drafts. So around all the insulation, we've filled with expanding foam everywhere. We've left a little air gap at the back of the plasterboard so the air can circulate at the back and you don't get condensation. Um, and that's it basically now. It's all insulated. So now we're going to put the cement board on. We're going to cement board this, get it beaded up and get it base coated today so that we can put the top coat, the render on tomorrow. For cutting cement boards, there's a few different ways you can do it. Hand saws are basically useless. An angle grinder with a stone cutting disc is quite good, like a diamond tip disc, but it kicks up loads of dust. Now there is a tool that like nibbles the board. I find that these are great. You can get a masonry bit for one of these. Now I'm sure you've probably seen other attachment for these, but we won't even talk about that. But anyway, this, with the masonry bit, goes through it like no one's business. And it doesn't cause loads of dust either. Okay, so whilst I'm cutting this board, let me just tell you quickly about this TDI tuning box. I've noticed straight off the bat that the van is a lot more torquey. Now I'm not a fast driver, but that'll probably come in handy when pulling out at roundabouts and things like that. And I've got a ton of sand in the back. I am interested and intrigued to see how fuel efficient it'll make it. So we'll have to see about that on the next video. We quickly installed the cement boards and because the cement boards are high alkali, you have to use corrosion resistant screws. I'm about to start base coating soon, so I want to cut the bell cast beads first and get those fixed in position. I do this because I want to build out the bell cast beads with the base coat. The other beads that go up those little splayed corners, I like to bed those in so I can adjust them. I'm also going to bed some render mesh into this. Although there's no joints that aren't covered by beads, I still want to play it safe. <laughs> He's human. You'll edit that bit out. There we go, perfect. Now, it does take a bit of faffing round trying to get these corners to meet up perfectly, but it's worth doing. At the end of the day, when the job's finished, the beads really set it off. Whether this actually needs meshing or not is questionable because there's no joints in the cement board, so that's why I didn't do the bit above the bead, but we did do the little splayed corner just before the bead went on. So up to now on this job, we're a whole day behind. And that's just because we had to take out all of the timber work from the bay. And I've done loads of these bay windows. And usually we take the render off and there's like felt with expanded metal lath on top of the felt. And every now and then you have to replace a stud or two studs. You don't normally have to replace the whole framework. So that set us back. Not only have we lost money with time, but we've also got to push our other jobs back as well. Not to mention all the extra cost of timber right, and fixings. Now it doesn't look the prettiest when it's just had a scratch coat on, but we bedded the mesh in HP12 um, on the render carrier board. Like ultimately K-Rend don't, don't guarantee when you put HP12 on render carrier boards, 
but I've tested it myself. And I guarantee it'll stick to it. It sticks far better than sand and cement it sticks to brickwork, so I'm not worried about that. That's as far as we're going to go with that. This come in handy. This was sent to me by um, Sigmund. He asked me to do a little review on it. I mean, I haven't done much of a review, but I used it. It was great. And the green means I can see it. It gives off lines in all directions. So, yeah, wonderful bit of kit. Sigmund. That's it for today. We're going to come back first thing tomorrow morning, put the top coat on that. Then we're going to whiz off to another job. So whilst we're just sat around waiting for that to set before we can scrape it, we're going to go and plaster some Artex ceilings around the corner. And then we're going to come back and scrape that. And that'll be it. Then we're going for the paint. Anyone that ever buys cave end and buys polar white, just take notice of this. That's the colour of it. Polar white is more like a magnolia. Don't forget, squeeze it right in the bead, mate. Oh. <laughs> He's a comedian. <laughs> watching my videos up. <laughs> yeah. Do some heavy breathing for him. I'm trying not to breathe, to be honest with you. I'm trying to. <laughs> Can't have you on my breath for so long, so it's going to be a short video. All you guys on YouTube have given him a complex about his breathing now. You don't realise you're doing it until you actually listen to it. If that microphone's that sensitive, it just picks up on everything. Yeah, to be fair, the amount of times I've sent customers to have a video of the job once and I'm done. It sounds like I'm dying. I'm all done. <laughs> it, the camera's that sensitive, it's a good job you can't hear what he's thinking. <laughs> yeah, that'll definitely be deadly. So I hand apply scrape renders. So because I'm hand applying, I have to put it on in two passes to get the thickness. It's different if you're using the machine. So I give it a first pass and I usually go about a metre, but this is staying nice and wet. So I'm going to put the whole bay on the first pass and then I'm going to put the second pass on. What you don't want is a skin to form in the meantime. If that starts to happen, you've got big problems. That's where ghost lines and halo rings come from. Another thing that you didn't see me do before I started, I went all over the scratch coat with me trowel and just scraped all the little bobbles of base coat off. When you put the scratches in the base coat, you cause little balls, the little balls are snot they are to, to roll up. And then what happens is when you put your colour coat on and you scrape it back, sometimes those little cruds can be sticking through. So you scrape all those off first. I had a lovely cup of coffee, and because I only weigh about 18 stone, when I was walking on the scaffold, it just tipped my cup over. So now I've got nothing. Scaffolding was just wobbling now when I was walking too quick. Anyway, we're going to get this second pass on now. This will be done any second. And then we've basically got six to eight hours, roughly, to wait before we can scrape it back. Right. If you listen carefully now, you're going to hear the customer come out. 
and compliments as to how much he likes the colour. So, whilst the cave is setting, we've nipped off around the corner to do another job, and this is helping pay for the lost day that we've encountered. Whilst we're waiting for the cave end to go off, we come with skim swart X sealing the snow. There's this one. Yeah, oh, come on, I'll show you. There's this one, and we just nipped and did this as like a little job in between. And this one in here. So that's these pretty much finished now. Um, quick clean up and then we go back and scrape render. We're just coming back to our rendering job now. Here we are. Let's see if this is ready to scrape. Sam's in the van getting the eyeball. Oh. <laughs> Not easy climbing the ladder with one hand and a bad knee. <laughs> Ooh, it's a little bit soft. We're going to take the top layer off and potentially leave this a little bit longer. So we ended up giving it an extra 40 minutes whilst we had a cup of coffee with the customer, who, by the way, was quite surprising. It turns out he's in his mid-70s. I thought he was just about 60. He's looking really well for his age. But anyway, we've got to start scraping now because it's five o'clock and if we don't get this done, it's going to go dark. It's important when using the bar as well to go both ways. I always try and go vertical as well as horizontal. That way, I sort of know that I've got it truly flat. That's it now. The bay is finished. There we go. Now, something that I always think is quite important. Look, you've got to make sure that the corners all meet up perfect. Now, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, what I tend to do to make that make sure that happens, see, is I cut the corners in situ with an angle grinder. I know people hate it. And I know people whinge because I take the guard off, but when you take the guard off, I can see straight down it. Now, just a little pointer on this. I use a tile disc, a stone disc, in the grinder, okay? So it's not like it can rip through your skin. Like, literally, I've touched the blade loads of times. It just gives you a friction burn. I mean, it's not very really nice. It's not, I wouldn't advise it, but it's not going to rip your finger off like a wood blade would do. And then the other thing is, you've got to bear in mind... I'm only cutting through plastic, so it's not like I'm cutting through brick and stone where there's little projectiles coming from, off. This stuff, it, it sort of melts its way through it. So although it looks dangerous, it is relatively safe. And you can get your corners pretty much perfect by doing it. The other thing is, if the corner opens up a little bit, whilst you're letting it set with the base coat, just use a little bit of duct tape and just tape the corners together. Hold them where you want them and just put some tape on them and hold it all together whilst the base coat sets and then you'll always get perfect corners. I always think it lets the job down if there's gaps in the beads. Anyway, now all that said, I don't want to get sued by any of you guys. So when you're using an angle grinder, be extra careful. Make sure you wear eye protection. Make sure you wear ear protection. 
make sure you've got your gloves on, make sure you've got your hard hat on, your steel toe cap boots on, make sure you've got two pairs of undies on. <laughs> I'm only joking, use common sense, okay? Just be safe, don't do anything stupid. I don't want to get sued for advising you the wrong information. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but in the video, I was using this 14 inch by four inch carbon steel trowel. There's four of these up for grabs. You could own my trowel literally for four pounds. All you need to do is click on the link in the description. A lucky winner is gonna have a name pulled out of a hat and is gonna win this trial for four quid. Now, if you don't wanna take the gamble and you wanna buy one outright, there's the option to do that there as well. All trials will be getting sent out after the 3rd of March. The live draw is on the 3rd of March at 7 p.m. live on my YouTube channel. Good luck to everyone that's entered. Take it easy. Thanks for watching. Ciao.